there have been times in American history when world events profoundly affected innovation. During wartime, brilliant minds from the manufacturing world were enlisted to streamline the process of protecting our nation and allies. Even before the December 7, 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor, which formally ushered the United States into World War II, the U.S. military had its eyes on Detroit. The auto industry got involved very early, in fact, even before the U.S. had formally declared war. The military realized that no one could do mass production the way that the automotive industry could do it. From 1942 until late 45, there were no new cars built in the United States. The U.S. auto industry made everything for the war, from ammunition to helmets to tents to tanks to airplanes. So all the auto plants were turned over to wartime production. The Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation's Matt Anderson spoke about the Herculean effort undertaken by the Ford Motor Company to scale up and mass produce the most complex machines in its history, warplanes. Did this require a major transition? Were they taking auto making facilities and just converting them into airplane building factories? Not just a transition, it actually required Ford to build an entirely new plant at a place called Willow Run, about 30 miles west of Detroit. Okay, so describe Willow Run. Willow Run is a massive combination plant slash factory slash airport where Ford built giant assembly lines, two of them running parallel, nearly a mile long that built airplanes just as they were building cars on a moving assembly line. Funded entirely by the federal government at a cost of $200 million, Willow Run was built on farmland used to grow soybeans. How big was the plant? The plant itself was massive. The main building was about two and a half million square feet. Whoa. And they broke ground on Willow Run. Broke ground in about March of 1941, finished the plant by November of 1941. A month before the U.S. entered the war with Pearl Harbor. Exactly. How many people were working in here? At the peak, Willow Run employed more than 40,000 people. 40,000? It was really a city unto itself. What kind of airplanes were being built at Willow Run? Ford was building B-24 bomber airplanes. They ended up building more than 8,600 of those airplanes by the time the war was over. A lot of them completely built and flown right away from the Willow Run Airport. How fast could they produce one? Ford mentioned at the beginning of the war that they were going to build these planes so quickly they could crank them out on the order of one every hour. And people thought that was absolutely nuts. But believe it or not, by about March of 1944, when they hit their peak efficiency, they were turning out one airplane every 63 minutes. So they basically made their goal. And much of that hard work was done by women. A lot of the young, able-bodied men, of course, were called up in the draft and sent off to war. Women were absolutely essential to this effort. They wore a new badge, a badge not only of courage, but of achievement. These women who had never worked outside their own homes before. Did this change the reputation of Detroit? It was a big moment for Detroit. In fact, the city gained the nickname Arsenal of Democracy as the supply house, supplying all of this hardware to the war effort. And it's a nickname Detroiters are proud of to this day. What a proud nickname to have. Absolutely, a great moment in the city's history. Mm -hmm. 